your boss, fuck your judgmental friends, and fuck your toxic ex. This is the year that you will make you money so that you can finally live life on your own terms. In this video, I'm gonna to reveal to you the secret framework that I've used to make millions online in my 20s, own and drive supercars, travel the world, meet world-renowned entrepreneurs, and do whatever the fuck I want. This blueprint is the exact same one that I've given to hundreds of private students to make you money. And today, in efforts of growing my YouTube channel, I've decided to give it all away for free. But first, when most people think of you money, they think of millionaires and billionaires living extravagant lifestyles, partying on yachts, popping champagne, doing whatever they want, or they think of this. Go yourself. Is that clear? But if you take a closer look at the term you money, it's less about having the money to spend on designer clothes and boats and more about having the freedom to say you to the things that hold you back in life. It's about being able to walk away from a job you hate or a toxic environment, whether it be relationships or anything to do with today's current economic or geopolitical climate that we live in. It's about having the financial and location freedom to live life on your own terms. Look at this video. This guy has a shitty job, a boring life, takes out the trash, no fulfillment at work, eating fast food, doesn't smile a single time in the day, complete loser. Just watching this video infuriates me because I know how close I was to living that life. And really, to be able to say f you to that life, you only need $10,000 to $20,000 per month in most parts of the world to live however you want. Some places, even less. I have some friends that even live off of $3,000 a month in countries like Thailand, and they live like kings. But at least with $10,000 to $20,000 per month in most cities, you can live a pretty comfortable lifestyle and have the ability to say f you to your boss. However, generating $10,000 to $20,000 per month is easier said than done for 95% of the population because for most people, their primary source of income is a job. And while there's nothing wrong with being an employee, at the end of the day, as an employee, you're trading your time for money. Let's say you graduate from college and land a decent job paying $50,000 per year, which is about $4,167 per month, which isn't terrible, but if your goal is to reach $10,000 to $20,000 per month and have f you money, even if you're a top performer and get promotions each year, it could easily take a decade or more to double your income. And that's assuming everything goes perfectly. The truth is, most people's income growth tends to stagnate over time. They might job hop a few times for decent pay bumps, but significant leaps in compensation become increasingly rare the further you get into your career. When I first got out of college, most of the jobs that you could get were starting at six to $8,000 a month, and you could work your way up to ten dollars to $20,000 per month. But when I talked to most engineers or computer scientists at Google or Facebook, they were simply geniuses who not only were smart, but they also grinded their face off, had no life, and were just completely consumed in their work. And then they would either get poached by a startup or they would start their own company. So if the end goal is to have your own thing and quit your job, why not just start there and skip all the bullshit in between like I realized? For the vast majority of people, a job alone is not going to be enough to generate serious wealth. Even a high paying job at Goldman Sachs will require you to work 80 hours a week to make half a million dollars a year. You will barely have enough time to even enjoy that money. That's why they call it golden handcuffs. If you want to reach you money levels of income that comes with location and time freedom you need to find ways to make your money work for you this is where the concept of leverage comes into play leverage refers to the ability to generate outsized results from a small amount of input it's about finding ways to multiply your efforts so that you can produce exponentially more value than you could on your own think about some of the wealthiest people in the world warren buffett daddy bezos elon musk a lot of them started out with almost zero leverage. They would do everything from coding to networking, accounting, and all the stuff you need to do when you run a business. But over time, their business grows and they make more money. They can hire more employees. They own assets that they can use as collateral to take out a loan. And now when they have an idea, they can send an army of people and resources to make it happen without them lifting a single finger. A simple idea from them requires almost zero time for them to execute. You think about like someone like Elon Musk, he has flamethrowers that he created and he just did that for fun because he had the resources and everything to make that happen. They've gone from a low leverage position 
to a high leverage position. The thing about individuals in positions of high leverage is that you won't find them doing lower leverage activities. Elon Musk won't be cooking his own dinner. He has a chef for Uber Eats or whatever the hell he does, maybe even has a printer that just prints his food off at this point. Whereas Jeff Bezos will never mop the floors. He has people to do that for him. And it's not because they can't do it or are too lazy, but it's because it straight up just doesn't make sense for them to do it given their leverage. Instead, they spend all their time building assets that can grow and produce cash flow. For every dollar that they put in, they know how to turn it into millions of dollars or even billions of dollars. And for every minute they put in to whatever they do, they get a significantly higher return than what you and I get. After studying these billionaires for a long time, I was able to derive what they all had in common, that a lot of us, normal people, and especially broke people, are missing. So if you wanna make serious money in your 20s, and be in a position where you can multiply your wealth into your 30s, the key is to build leverage. As Naval Ravikant talks about a world-renowned investor in the tech world, he talks about there are four main types of leverage. There is media leverage, there is code leverage, there is labor leverage, and there is capital leverage. Now, for most people in their 20s, we don't have access to significant capital to invest and buy businesses. So we don't have capital leverage. And if you look at the scale of the amount of leverage that you have, it is pretty low leverage. So you need a lot of money in order for it to be even effective. And unless you're a coding whiz or went to school for computer science like I did, building software probably isn't the easiest path either. That's why I ended up dropping out. Hiring employees not only requires money, but it also requires skill sets as well. So labor leverage is typically off the table for most people getting started. So the only type of leverage that we can really build that is also conveniently the highest leverage is media leverage. Media leverage means growing your own audience, whether that's on social media or you see like television and shows like Netflix, or with these days, we have tools that are easy to access like email lists or YouTube channels and the plethora of different social media services that are out there today. Compare this to previous generations where you needed to have connections and lots of money to get on TV, radio, or through prints to build your media leverage. But for the first time in human history, the internet has democratized media creation and distribution. And only recently, there has been a huge boom in free YouTube content on how to grow an audience. Honestly, it's never been easier to learn how to build media leverage. I remember just a few short years ago, when I was trying to get into YouTube, there was none of this. There was like maybe a video here or there, but now these days, there's thousands of videos online on how to build your audience online. And it's never easier to build media leverage. The reason why I recommend everyone in their 20s to build media leverage is because the barrier to entry is so incredibly low. You don't need expensive equipment or technical skills. You can use free and cheap tools online and make a simple 10 minute video, post it online, and reach millions of people and even get paid millions for it with platforms like TikTok, Instagram, and YouTube. You see the views that these channels are getting on their videos? This is attention. If you know how to get people to click on your video, watch it for 30 seconds, five minutes, 30 minutes, or even two hours, you know how to command an audience attention and you can get them to pay you thousands of dollars. Hollywood has convinced billions of people to pay them $15 to sit in a theater and watch a movie for two hours. And right now, we have the technology to create videos that compete for the same attention that Hollywood competes for. Everyone wants attention and eyeballs on their videos because attention is the new oil. When you hold an audience's attention, you have an asset that can be monetized in 50 different ways from sponsorships and ads to selling your own products. You can sell information, you can sell services, or you can even sell merchandise. If you know how to get million of people to watch your YouTube videos, you are bound to make some money from it, even if you have no clue what you're doing. And what most people don't understand is that having an audience is the ultimate infinite money glitch. I know YouTube channels with 100,000 subscribers who are making millions every single year and every single video that they post generates some tens of thousands of dollars in either AdSense or sales in a product that they are selling. Their audience is a tap that they can turn on whenever they want and thousands of dollars will be flooding in. In 2024, having an audience is one thing that will guarantee you will never go broke. You can have 50 employees, but if your business goes under, you'll have to fire all of them. You can have a cushy software engineering job and get fired by your company. Lately, I don't know if you've been noticing what's going on, but there's been layoffs everywhere. 
So who's to say that your job isn't at risk? You can have lots of capital, but lose it if you're not a smart investor. But if you have an audience of people who are your biggest fans and are willing to sit on their desk, refreshing their homepage on Sunday night or whenever you usually post, you will unlock you money. And this is something that I wish I realized earlier because for every year that I wasn't aware that building media leverage was going to be the most important skill, I was leaving millions on the table. Back then, it wasn't clear to me, but it very much so is now that I have multiple YouTube channels bringing in forty to $60,000 every single month in AdSense and sponsorships. Before I started my first YouTube channel, I was on a very different life path. I was told time and time again that this was the way to live. You go to school, you go to college, you work your way up your career, work a good career for 40 years, and then you get to the point where you get to retire. But when you do the math, it doesn't add up. I started to realize that, you know, you get to work your way up the career, but then retirement, if you do the math of like the average life expectancy of a person in this world, it only goes to 72. So that means you only really have seven years to live. But I didn't really think that far ahead. I just saw what was in front of me. And that was to go to college. My friends told me to go to college. My parents told me to go to college. Even people I looked up to told me to go to college. So I went to college and I went to school for computer science. I did that for a little bit of time until one day I stumbled on an ad that changed everything. This guy was showing off his Lamborghini talking about how he made millions of dollars online. Of course, like most people, my first thought was this dude is probably selling drugs, but something made me a little bit curious so I dug a bit deeper. Turns out this guy didn't come from money. He didn't take the traditional college to corporate route. Instead, he built his own online business from scratch. And he was no different from me. He grew up on a farm. And in fact, I had grown up on a farm. When my parents lost everything during 2008, we moved on a farm. So it was super relatable to me. He wasn't some mega genius, but he was made 20 times more money than anybody else that I looked up to. And when I heard his story, it blew my mind. I had no idea it was possible to make money without going into massive student debt, climbing the corporate ladder, and working your ass off until you die. Keep in mind, this was back in 2017 when making money online was taboo and nobody talked about it publicly. 20 years ago, every kid wanted to be a firefighter or a police officer growing up. Now things have changed. Today, every kid wants to become the next Mr. Beast and kids are making thousands of dollars a month posting simple videos online. But I digress. I took the leap of faith and I invested in his online course, which costed me a few months of income at the time, which was nearly everything I had. The more I dove into the course, the more I discovered the entire world of people making serious money on the internet. They had all kinds of businesses from e-commerce to affiliate marketing, to coaching, to freelancing. But the common thread that I noticed was that they use online platforms to get their message out there and attract customers. All of them were living life on their own terms. They didn't clock in at 9 a.m. and clock out at 5 p.m. They didn't have a boss to report to. And they definitely didn't have to wait 30 minutes for the subway because they missed it by two minutes. This opened my eyes to what was possible. The fact was, is people weren't geniuses. They weren't that much smarter than me. And if anything, I thought they were dumber than me. And I could 100% do what they did. So I started exploring possible online business ideas. So first of all, I started with real estate investing. I made some decent money flipping houses around thirty to $50,000, but it wasn't something I was truly passionate about. I didn't wake up in the morning saying, woo, let's talk to people going through financial hardship that want to sell me their house at a discount. And if I was honest, it was moving slower than I'd like and was very inconsistent. Some months I'd make $10,000, but then I wouldn't see another check for six months. And on top of having to talk to contractors all day, dealing with the immense negativity I receive with my marketing efforts, dealing with the title companies, it was a pain in the ass and a complete nightmare. I knew I needed to find a business model that aligned with my interests and skills, and more importantly, had leverage. And that's when I stumbled upon a small creator named Graham Stephan, who was one of the first YouTubers to be completely transparent about how much money he was making from his channel. At the time, he was pulling in around $20,000 per month just 
from posting videos, which was crazy to me back then. His early videos were mostly house tours and just him sitting down talking into the camera about real estate tips. He was also a real estate agent, which was similar to what I was doing. So I started posting videos about my real estate investing experiences, sharing my successes and failures with my small audience. And I remember vividly, I went and uploaded my first video. Boom, 10 views. The next one, 12 views. Another one, eight views, which was far from the hundreds of thousands of views that Graham was getting. I didn't think too much about it though, and it didn't bother me. I kept creating, consistently posting new content. Slowly but surely, my channel started to gain traction. Once I had 10 videos on the channel, I could see the views starting to trickle in. Let's post daily for a year, I told myself. I went from 100 views a month to 1,000 views a month, to 10,000 views a month, to 1,000 views a day. I hit my first 1,000 subscribers on YouTube. Bang. Eligible to become a YouTube partner. Bang. Before I knew it, my videos started making money from AdSense. Bang. And as soon as my channel grew, so did my income. And after an entire year of uploading, thousands of hours of dedication, many sleepless nights, I went from a super inconsistent income, struggling to pay the bills, some months, to a few thousand, then to three to $4,000 per month consistently. Now, by any means, this wasn't you money yet but for some videos recorded on my iphone with a shitty mic that's not too bad i wanted to double down but this time with the system to get the videos produced you see one of the big issues i found with making real estate videos was that i was becoming one of the biggest youtubers in that niche and because the tam total addressable market was only so big. I was capped out on my growth. There was only, in layman's terms, it means that there was only so many people that I could make my videos for. And let alone, I was the biggest bottleneck. If I wasn't up, if I wasn't making videos, if I wasn't editing them, there was no content going up. So I started all over. I created a new channel. And this time I picked something that appealed to a wider audience. And then I also hired an editor, a scriptwriter, and someone to do the voiceovers. And I just started uploading video. So I didn't have to do any of the production. I had other people doing it for me. I would just take the stories from Reddit about dads finding out they weren't the father of their child or lottery winners sharing what happened when they won and anything that I thought was funny and would perform as good YouTube videos. And I would make them into videos like these. Task Reddit, doctors and nurses of Reddit. Have you ever witnessed a couple have a child that was obviously not the father's? If so, what happened? And in just a few months, I went from making three to four thousand dollars a month to making forty thousand dollars a month because my videos were hitting millions of views. That's you money using attention and leverage. And this Reddit stories channel was just the start of my faceless YouTube automation journey. When I think of building an audience, Faces YouTube is by far the highest form of media leverage. First of all, you don't have to be on camera and show your face, eliminating the need to have to even consistently be doing the work all the time. You're also building an audience that will pay you passive income through AdSense and sponsorships. You aren't limited to just running one channel. You can run multiple channels across multiple different niches, allowing you to really have freedom because you're not tied to one specific audience or one specific demographic that's watching your content. And you can get started with close to zero dollars if you decide to do everything yourself. YouTube is really the only social media platform where you can post a video, which will still pay you five years down the road. For example, this video has made me $20,000 in the past three years. My faceless channel has made me millions of dollars and allowed me to escape the corporate rat race, travel the world whenever I want, and have the time freedom to just enjoy my life. Developing the skill set of growing a YouTube channel from scratch and making viral video after viral video is the one thing that has allowed me to build the life of my dreams. And it's gonna be one of the most essential skills in the next 10 years. If I wanted to make you money all over again in 2024, I'd start my own faceless YouTube channel by following these three steps. So I'm not gonna go into like a whole hour long video like I have other times. I'm just gonna give you guys kind of at least the basis so at least you have enough to get started. So the first thing that you wanna do is you wanna start what are called outlier videos so you want to start finding the videos on these channels that have gotten an outsized result compared to the other videos on a typical channel so typically you know if a channel gets 
10,000 views a video, and then one video gets 100,000 views or a million views, you wanna start noting these videos and you wanna start shooting for these videos. And then the next thing you wanna start doing is what we call pattern recognition. And so what we wanna start doing is we wanna start decoding the pattern of what made that video so successful in the first place. So this is typically like writing down, you know, what are the talking points they have in the video? How did they construct the thumbnail? How did they write the title? How did they write the intro of the video? What music did they use in it? And what fonts did they use? So this part gets really technical, but you wanna start seeing what are the patterns of a successful video. And as someone like Mr. Beast talks about in interviews, he talks about you want to find you know, you want to just do this a lot until you just have your own kind of brain and your own like internal computer where you can look at a thumbnail or an idea and you know if it's a good video or not. At this point, I've done this like thousands of times, so I'm really good at it. So the third part, which is content creation. So this is kind of a big broad thing. I will kind of try to chunk it down for you guys a little bit real quick for the sake of the video. And so what you want to do for content creation is you want to chunk this down into three components. You want to have the script writer, you want to have the voice actor recording the voiceover of the script, and then you want to hire a video editor, and then typically they can also make the thumbnail, and then you can upload for now until you start getting some results, and if you want, you can ask for some of these people to do it. So what you want to do is you can find these places, people on easy websites like Fiverr or Upwork, and so for the script writer, what you do is you just have someone, you give them the topic that you have, you know, as I will break down in a moment for you guys, and you'll give them the topic. And then what they'll do is they'll do the research for the video and then they'll write the script. And then once you have the script, you'll have someone do the voiceover where they'll read the script. And then once they record the voiceover for the script, then you'll have someone go find clips and images online from cheap and free or sites online that they can find and, and demonstrate what you are talking about inside of the video. And to play into why this is so successful, if we break down these first two components, you'll actually notice that these are what is known as finding the things that capture people's attention. And as we talked about earlier, attention is the new oil. The more views you get, the more money you make. And for content creation, this part, it creates media leverage and also people leverage, or as Naval Ravikant likes to call it, he likes to call it labor leverage. So for example, I saw this video one day on my feed and a few others that were getting millions of views with the same format of what happened to blank after blank. So I knew that I could take that format and apply it for another topic and it could do well too. And at the time, there were also a bunch of shows on Netflix that were released around the topic of World War II and Nazi Germany and those subjects. And so there was a clear demand for World War II content. So I decided to combine the outlier format with the World War II topic and wrote the script and edited it. I posted this video and bang, 5.7 million views over the span of three years and it's still growing. This one video alone has made me $24,000 and will continue making me more money for the next decade. That is the power of media leverage. But here's the thing, I can sit here and tell you that you've struck gold by clicking on this video, but most people still won't take advantage of it. They'll say they don't have the time or they don't know what to post or they don't know how to Photoshop a thumbnail. And the bottom line is this, building a following of any kind and real media leverage takes consistency and persistence. You have to be willing to put yourself out there, experiment and keep showing up even when the views and followers are low. So. If you're in your 20s, if you want to make fucking money, start making content. Post your first video, then your second, then your third. Don't get discouraged if it's slow at first. If it's slow at first, stick with it and your life will change. The best part of this is you don't even need to be smart to do everything that I just showed you. Click on this video right here and learn why people dumber than you are becoming millionaires in 2024. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.